Hello, today we will be discussing Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear. It's the last book in the Ruby Red trilogy and I'm really sad because I love this series. I felt like they could have been longer, like this book. This book skipped a lot of detail. It was almost as if the author had like so many pages she could write. She had to think of creative ways to write it because there's this one part where Gwen's with the count and she's thinking back to the meeting she had with Lucy and Paul about some plan we never read about, which I guess it could kind of work out because if it didn't, then we would kind of already know and the ending would be spoiled. But Gwen didn't know that, so why? I felt like we should have known the plan. And I waited. <laughs> For three books, just, just, for Lucy and Paul and Gwen, just have, like, this moment, she kind of, when Gwen's like, yeah, I know you're my parents, and, like, it's a little cute moment, and it never happened. Ever! It was, it was there! She said that, oh, and we told him we all cried. I wanted to read about that, not read about it in past tense. But anyways... Enough ranting about the book, let's talk about this wonderful book, it was great. At the beginning, Gideon goes up to Gwen and he's like, I'm sorry about this, but um, could we, could we just be friends? Gideon, you never tell a girl you just want to be friends after a breakup! You just, you just don't do that! You never, ever, ever say that. Never, ever, 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 like, ever. Like, serious Gideon, you can't just go make a declaration of love, say, oh, I love you, and then be like, yeah, we, we should just be friends. Yeah. So when I read this, I kind of thought that, okay, he's probably just saying this because of what are in those documents. It's gonna be like a William Hammerdale kind of thing. He actually does love her, which, which you find out he does. Okay, so apparently there's this thing, so we all knew about this, that for the curse to be broken, Gwen has to die, the ruby. Turns out she dies out of love, so Gideon's like, I can't make her love me. I gotta do everything I can to make her not love me so that she doesn't die for me. And so I was like... William Hammerdale reincarnated. It was, it was a William Hammerdale kind of moment. Okay, so one of the like, most confusing things to me is time travel. I don't get it. I don't get the concept of it. So like, how could something that is happening now be happening in the past? And then we would get it all to the future. Past is alright. To understand how you can travel to the past, I get that. So we... But then when you watch other shows like Doctor Who or something and they're traveling to the future, you're like, how does the future happen if the present hasn't happened yet? This book was confusing, especially when there was time travel within time travel. And I was just like, what, what, what is going on here? Like, how could there be traveling within time traveling? I was really sad to see James not be a ghost anymore. Like, I mean, it's great that he got to live a long life, but it's kind of sad because Gwen will never see him again and he does not even remember her. So apparently, Gwen's grandfather, Lucas, did not die naturally. Turns out, he was killed. Because Gwen's like, it's so strange though, the day he dies at his funeral, our house is broken into and someone takes the journals. So you kind of assume something is with these journals or in these journals that somebody wants. And it turns out that is. And that kind of just ticked me off. I was so sad because I'm like, oh my god, I loved, I loved Lucas. He was awesome. Dies. And so I kind of wondered, like, how would this have been different if this never happened? So the day they have to go to the ball, Gwyneth pretends she's sick and her face Family, like her aunt is the most annoying person ever. She's like, oh, well, you there's Gwen is always seeking for attention when dear Charlotte is sick. Yeah, she really searches for attention a lot in this book. It's it's really annoying me how much she searches for attention as she says she wished Charlotte got the gene a lot of times. Yeah. Then Dr. White plays along, so I'm kind of thinking, what is, does he know, does he know, like, what the secret is, or the danger this is, and that's why he's playing along? I think he did, which then we find out in the end that Mr. Whitman is actually the Count St. German, and apparently he's been immortal this whole time until Gwen was born. That's why Gwen needs to die, so then the Count can gain his immortality back. And... Let's just talk about the ending, okay? I felt it was rushed. It it was rushed, okay? You took three books setting it up, and here you set it up. I'm like, 50 pages left. I'm like, how in the world is she gonna finish this? I mean, you spent all this time building up this moment, and then it's like over in 10 pages. 
Once we find out Mr. Whitman's account, he's like, I need to gain my mortality back. When Gwen travels to the past, the Count's like psychic, I'm gonna call him, basically gives Gwen this poison that's supposed to kill her. I think this is the way the Count was trying to see, okay, is she really immortal or not? But anyways, poison to kill her, and I'm thinking, Gwen, you say you just don't trust this guy over and over, but yeah, you take something you don't even know what it is. Stranger danger, stranger danger, stranger danger. Okay, so after Gwen is like passed out, which should have been poison, but doesn't kill her, she zaps to the present and she sees Mr. Whitman. This is when we figure out Mr. Whitman is the count. And so Gwen's like all mad at her and stuff, say, take these pills, and these pills like would kill her because she's taking her own life. That's the only way she can die. She's like, no. And he's like, well, if you don't, then I'm going to kill Gideon. And I'm thinking, where's Gideon? Turns out he went to the past. He's like, when he goes back, I'll kill him, unless if you do this, which I figure that either way, he's probably going to kill Gideon. Gwen doesn't take it, and Gideon pops up, and the Count kills Gideon. I didn't think this was going to happen, and the Count kills Gideon. I'm just like... <laughs> to make you immortal, Gideon took that, so now he's immortal with Gwen. And so now they could forever, ever, ever be together, like, ever. Ever, ever, ever be together. Like, ever. Back to the ball. When they were at the ball, you, I knew that Gwen was going to meet her future self. And that's this part where we really figure Gwen is immortal. And at first, I was so confused when leading to death, and when they get back, they're like, it's just a scratch. You, you overreact. Reacting. So they go, okay, does something like with time travel like affect that? Because you know, you just want them from the past to the future, it can heal. And then we find out she's immortal, which I mean, made Gideon look like some overreactive person when she was actually really bleeding to death. I wish we would have seen more scenes with Paul and Lucy. I feel like we really did not get to know their characters as well as I would have liked to because I liked Lucy and Paul. I just wish there could have been some way that we would have been able to read more about them. This is this is where time traveling gets confusing. So, they were once living in the present, in Gwyneth's present, and then they traveled back in time. So technically, are Lucy and Paul already dead? Like, you went to a cemetery, would you see their grave? Because they live now in 1912, and Gwyneth lives in 2011. So I'm kind of confused here. Are they kind of still living, though? Because they were young when they traveled to the past? Or are they actually really dead, because they technically lived their life? It's, it's confusing. I don't... I noticed at the end it says prologue. And I'm like, you mean epilogue? Is this, is this like a typo or something? So I realized it's 1919 and technically it has happened before our um, grade happened, which supports my theory on Lucy and Paul. So I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And so, but then I kind of wonder when it was 1912 when we during the book, but now it's 1919 in the prologue. Then what year is it for Gwen and Gideon? Like I said, there could have been more books to this series. I felt like Pearson Gierko wrote another book on Gwen and Gideon like 50 years later when they were immortal or stuff like that. So it did miss a lot of details. I never really figured out if Gideon could read minds or not. And I feel like maybe that was just like a decoy to throw us off. But I was never sure. Could Gideon really read minds? When Gideon and Gwen go to that party, Cynthia's party, which just so happens to be green themed and Emerald green is green. I love these covers, by the way. They're so much prettier than the ugly paperbacks I have. Anyway, Starlight gets drunk over this, like, liked punch that they were serving, and she's up there singing karaoke to a Lady Gaga song, and she then sees Gideon and Gwen, and she starts, like, confessing that she loves Gideon, but he doesn't like her, and he likes Gwen, that's why she doesn't like Gwen. And I felt so I felt bad for Charlotte. I mean, I kind of wish there could have been a moment, like, after the party where Charlotte is sober and Gwen could be like, hey, yeah, let's talk about this and stuff. It's not, and I always found it funny when, so Charlotte gets a hangover and Gwen's aunt's like, oh my god, we need to take her to the doctor, so there's something wrong with her, and Aunt May, like, it's a hangover. Yes, your perfect daughter can actually get a hangover at times. Mr. Bernard's name! Let's let's just get this into you. So Lucy and Paul take a new name and it's Bernard. And so I kinda of wonder, is Mr. Bernard a relative of Lucy and Paul? Like it has to be. He has to be a relative of Lucy and Paul. So that kinda of makes Mr. Bernard like 
Gwen's somewhat relative. And I'm like, no wonder he helped them. And I'm just like, am I blown? Like. So when Gideon lets all his walls come down, it's really sweet. I really learned to love Gideon. I thought Gideon was a great character. He was a frustrating character, I will admit that. Most frustrating, probably, next to American Singer. Would you figure out why? He's a great guy and I love him. He was awesome and I just wish there could have been more of that in the series. I laughed <laughs> at the part when they're in the sewer and because in Sapphire Blue, Gideon comes back, he's all mad, Gwen. She's like, what? What's your problem, dude? And he's like, you hit me over the side of the head. He's like, what? He's like, I saw you and you hit me. And then we find out that that's not the case. Gwen and Gideon came back to stop what the past Gideon had already done. And by doing that, they ran into him. Well, Gwen realized it. She's like, I'll be right back. So that's when we know Gideon saw Gwen. Then <laughs> Gideon comes and hits his own self. Over the head. When he hits himself over the head, he thinks it's Gwen. He's like, why'd you hit me when it actually himself? Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Please feel free to share your opinions, like, and subscribe to this channel for more bookish things. Thank you for watching. Bye!